Hello everybody, it's Wendy and today we are going to do anklets. It's all about anklets. So anklets are basically just a bracelet for your leg. And <laughs> we're going to make, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six types laid out here. Not sure we'll get through all six, but we're going to do a few anyway. So our encouraging word for today is Proverbs 3, 6, no, I can't read my own card. 3, 5, and 6. Put my glasses on, that helps. Trust in me with all your heart and I will guide you. I have found that to be true. Very, very true. Okay, so anklets. Now, um, this first one we're going to make, I will tell you the products you're going to need for each one as we go. Uh, we're going to be using some stringing wire. And I'm making this one all silver because I wear a lot of black and silver. And I thought this would be really pretty. So these are just some really um, sparkly silver. I don't even know where I got them. They're just little round silver four millimeter beads. And then these are some kind of disc rondelles. They again are very sparkly and beautiful. I got them from AliExpress. Um, so we're going to be using a bunch of those. You're going to need some bead stringing wire. This is actually, let me pull out the container. This is Beadalon 19 strand bead stringing wire, okay, in satin silver. Um, I have got two 2x2 two two crimp tubes, one lobster clasp, two crimp covers, um, and I'm actually going to need a ring for my lobster to clasp onto. So let me grab my jump rings out. Actually, let's see here what I've got. <coughs> Excuse me. I think I'll use a decorative ring. And I've got some twisty ones in here. So that would be really pretty. Okay. So this one is super easy and you need to measure your ankle. My ankle is seven and a half inches around and all we're going to do is string this up like a regular little bracelet. So I'm going to do my ending first. I'm going to take my crimp uh, bead here and I'm going to attach it directly onto my lobster. Now you can use wire guards if you want to. Um, I'm probably not going to. I don't know how often I will wear these anklets, but <laughs> um, I'm just going to attach it right on. So you put your wire through your crimp tube, through your lobster, and back down through your crimp tube. Then you're gonna scoot your crimp tube up, and we're going to take our pliers, and you want to make sure, if you can see here, that your little um, wires are not crossed, that they're laying side by side. And we're going to just lay this in the divot in the very back, and I've got it upside down. I thought, that doesn't look right the divot in the very back. We're going to pull it up, pull it tight, and making sure that your wires are not crossed, we're going to crimp it down. Now, if you can see, what that does is that puts one wire in each of these little channels. See that? And we're going to turn this 90 degrees. So you've got your wire in each of the little channels there. And now we're going to turn it, and so it is vertical in our crimping plier. And let's see, I'm probably going to go in the second one. A lot of times I either use the first or the second divot because I like a smaller, a smaller crimp, and just going to crimp it down. And it's going to turn that crimp, and I'm even going to go in, into the smaller one in the front and do it. And there you have it. It just turns it into this little crimp, okay? Then I'm gonna take my cover. I like to hold these in my plier. It kinda makes it easier sometimes. I don't know, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And I'm gonna slide it right over that little crimp, like right now it doesn't. And these crimp covers may not be big enough for these crimp tubes. I'm gonna try it, cause I don't like to use too big of one. There, yeah, that one went on just fine. Sometimes the pliers make it easier, sometimes they just don't. And I'm going to try to close it up. You just slide it right over and close it down over that crimp. It looks like a little Pac-Man. But it's just going to make the crimp cover, or the crimp, just be covered up and look like a regular bead. See? Just like that. 
Okay, so there we have it. Just make sure it's closed all the way around. And there it is. Okay, so now I'm going to string this up. Let me get those out of the way because we're going to have to use them on the other end. Okay, so I'm just going to start stringing. I'm going to do a couple of my, probably two of my little silver four millimeter beads and then one of my round discs. And you want to make sure back here where your wire is sticking out that you go ahead and put it underneath your little beads there. And I think I'll probably just keep this pattern. Two of these guys, one disc. And I just like all of the sparkle that's going to be in this. It's really sparkly and silver and pretty. There's the two. A disc bead. Yeah, that's a pretty pattern. I mean, it's simple, but <clears throat> the sparkle in these, just they're just so pretty. So we'll do two and a disc bead. And I'm just going to continue this pattern until I get to the length that I need for my anklet. So go ahead and do the same. Continue with whatever pattern you're using until you get to the length you need and come right on back. Okay, so I've got my anklet strung up to pretty close to the length that I'm going to want it to be. Actually, I'm going to take this one off and um, let me measure it, but I just held it up to my ankle and it <laughs> fits pretty good before I put the clasp on. So yeah, it's about, it's about eight inches. So maybe my ankle's not seven and a half inches. Maybe it's eight, but I don't want it to be too tight. So I'm going to go with this and I'm just going to take again the crimp bead put it on there, and then I'm just going right through the um, jump ring, this little ring here. It's going to go back around, back through the crimp bead, and down through a couple of the beads. Okay, just like that. I'm going to pull this tight. Make sure that you don't have slack here and that your beads aren't, you know, flopping around on there. Now on this end, it's a little harder to make sure that your wires aren't crossed, but you can try and just crimp it down, turn it vertical in there, and close it right up. Whoops, I was not wanting to close up. There we go. Close it right up. Okay, then I'm going to trim off my excess wire that's sticking out right here. These cutters are so dull. I need some new cutters really bad. And then I am going to put my little crimp bead cover on. And just set him right on there. My fingers and my fingernails look awful. My hands do. We walked the beach all day yesterday. Picked up shells and I've got just, I don't know, I get stained. <laughs> Won't come off sand and dirt and everything else but no matter how much I wash my hands just I'm a crafty girl and constantly doing something I was pouring concrete the other day making stepping stones I've been doing some acrylic painting so it's like this one's not wanting to go on here right let me pull it back off a little bit sometimes um the smaller ones work and sometimes they don't. Sometimes you can open them up a little. So if I take my plier and hold this end of it, I take my other plier and grab it and just kind of open it a little bit. Sometimes that helps them to go on. And sometimes you just need a bigger size, but we'll see if this one will work because it worked on the other end. So it really should work over here too. It may just be closed up a little too much. Whoops. Okay, so let me see if I can get him to go on there. And I do like to use small ones if I can, or the smallest size that I can get to work. Now see, he's going on there much better now. He just needs it opened up a little bit and close it right up. There we go. So there's our first little anklet. And then, you know, if it ended up being not too long or not long enough, I could add another ring and make it kind of adjustable. But that is one way. I'm not going to stick my foot up here because that would make you all unhappy. But here is what it would look like, obviously, if this was my foot. Pretend it's my foot. So, very cute. 
So that is anklet number one. Anklet number two, we're going to be using some stretch cord. So you can do them this way with the, the stringing cord, bead stringing wire, or you can use some stretch cord. So here I have some Supple Max. Um, this is it right here. And with this, I like to stretch it out a little bit before I make my bracelet. So just take your, take it, run it through your fingers, kind of warm it up and stretch it out. This way it doesn't stretch out after, you know, it's on your foot. Now the thing with using stretch cord to make anklets is it's got to be big enough to fit over the biggest part of your foot. So keep that in mind. I'm going to be using some mermaid glass beads here and a clear or an AB and then kind of a black like grayish and again I wear tons of black so that's why I make everything <laughs> in black gray or white <laughs> pretty much everything and then I have a decorative bead here that I'm gonna hang on it and a bale okay so this is just a um, hanger bale and we're just gonna mix these up and make a pretty anklet. So for this one, I want my bail to cover the knot that I tie. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start stringing. And I don't know, do I wanna do these in a pattern? I think I'm just gonna do these random. Yeah, I really don't wanna do a pattern with them. I'm just gonna kinda randomize it and just string it up to the length that I need. So go ahead, string all your beads on to the length that you need, and then come right back, and I will show you how to finish this one off. This one's super easy. Okay, so I've strung mine up right at about eight inches, and that's probably gonna be pretty good by the time I get the finishing part on here. So what you're gonna do when you get it strung up all the way that you want it to go is you're gonna take your hanger bell, place it on, and then we're just gonna tie it. So I'm going to do, and I wanna do it fairly tight, but I'm going to do a surgeon's knot, which is going through the loop twice instead of just once. Okay, so there we go. If I can get it through there. Okay, so surgeon's knot, regular knot, pulling very tight in between surgeon's knot. Okay, um, and I just pull really tight, and then if you want, you can put some glue on it. So I don't know if I have any glue close. Doesn't seem like I do. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any glue close, so I'm not going to do it right now. But yeah, if you wanted to just stick a little super glue on there or, um, you know, whatever you have, um, I'm just going to continue. I'm going to make a couple more knots, so we'll be good and secure. Surgeon's knot again. Pull it tight. Now, I'm going to clip this. Let my knots... I'm just going to clip them off right there, and they should go up inside your hanger bale. Okay, that's what you want. Now, we're going to take an eye pin. I didn't tell you that you needed that. I'm very sorry, <laughs> but you do. So, we're going to take an eye pin, and we're going to hang this beautiful bead. We're going to make a dangle, so we're just going to stick it on our eye pin right here. We are going to bend this 90 degrees. And do I want to do a wrapped loop? I probably do want to do a wrapped loop. So I'm going to take my round nose pliers. I'm going to go up and over, rotate the pliers up, and go under. And see, that's going to create this little loop. And then I can grab this with my flat nose plier. I'm using my crimping plier. but And then take my other plier and come on around. And you know what I did not do? Which was really stupid. I did not put the loop on the bail before I wrapped it. So I'm going to have to attach it with a jump ring, but that's okay. That'll make it dangle down a little bit better. That'll be okay. I was trying to do a wrapped loop to make it more secure, but it's all right. Um, if you wanted to, 
Make it more secure with a wrapped loop than before you closed your loop, you would need to attach it to your bail. That doesn't make sense, right? So I'm gonna grab a jump ring and attach it on with a jump ring just because I goofed that part up. There we go. But that's all right. It'll give it a little dangle effect, which is what I do want. So I'm gonna take my jump ring. This is an oval jump ring, so it's a little more secure, I feel like, than a regular round jump ring because the um, cut on the oval jump ring is gonna be in the middle of the ring and not down at the bottom. So if it would happen to come open a little bit, you might have a chance of not losing your charm, you know. So there it is. And we would put this on and we would have our beautiful little bead dangling down, probably the other way, pretend my foot's up here. <laughs> But again, another really cute little way to make an anklet using stretch cord, okay? So that's anklet number two. Here we have them. You can layer them. Look how pretty it would be to layer these. Wish that guy would. There we go. So, you know, you can layer them together. So that's kind of my goal is to make some I can layer. But now we're going to do some with some charms. So I have all of these little seashell charms. And aren't they adorable with the little pearls in them? Now, this is very easy, okay? All you're going to do is we're going to take all of our charms and our chain. Now, this is just a medium length chain. Um, and I'm going to cut it at about 9 inches. Okay, so right about here. I'm just going to give it a trim. Okay, get this out of the way. And then all we're gonna do on this one is hang our charms. Now, one thing that's important is you wanna flatten this chain out here, and you do want to make sure that your little charms hang straight down and facing the correct way. So you kinda wanna make sure all your chain is laying flat when you're doing this, okay? So there it all is. And I'm just going to hang my charms on. So I'm gonna start right about here and we're just going to attach them all with a jump ring. It's very, very easy. <laughs> this part, this one is super easy. Almost not really worthy of being in the video, I don't think, but I wanted to just show all the different ways that I could of making an anklet. So I'm just going to start attaching them every few lengths See how far apart I want to go. So there's one. It's good if you can keep your chain laying flat like this, okay? Because see how he's flipping over? I want to make sure that my chain is hanging correctly so that when I put this on, all the little charms hang correctly. And you may have to keep repositioning your chain several times to do this. But it is kind of important. You don't want the back of them showing. Unless you do. I don't. <laughs> so I'm going to put this pink one on. And I'm just going to go over about, I don't know, this many. I don't know how many lengths that is. It's totally personal preference. You can space it out how you want it. But again, try to make sure that you get it on facing the right way with your chain kind of laying flat. Okay, so see how those two are both facing the correct direction. So let's see, let's do a green one. Now, I do want to skip the same amount of lengths. So let's see, one, two, three on the fourth one. One, two, three. So right there on that fourth link, I'm going to go ahead and put my next one. One, two, three. So right here. And you could use different charms, you know, you could do like all different, I thought about doing um, just a sea themed one, whoops, with all different um, sea creatures and stuff, but I liked, I just thought these were so cute together, all these different colors of these little shells. So again, flipping them around, making sure that my chain is laying the right way here. And it is pretty important to do that. So I'm just going to flatten it back out. 
You may have to turn it and flip it a little bit, but you do want it, you know, you want them all laying the same direction. So take the time to do that. It's a little fiddly, but well worth it in the end. Okay. So I've got, I need a purple one. I've got blue, pink, green, and purple. So I will go over my four links and put my purple one on. So one, two, three, here's number four. Get a hold of that very well. It's my flyer. There we go. Bent nose pliers probably aren't the best for this. Okay, straighten my chain back out. And let's twist it right there. Let me make sure it's laying the right way. There we go. Um, let's see. I think I'll do pink again. I don't really want to just do a repeating pattern. So let's do a pink one. And you know what? I went over one too many with him, didn't I? Did I? One, two, three. No, he's on the fourth one. Okay. Making sure. <laughs> let's take this pink one. You could actually even hang this from something when you're doing it, and that might make it easier. Um, I don't know. I always just like to try to lay it flat on the table. Okay, so he's on there. So one, two, three. Here's the fourth one. But I guess you could hang it around something round and try to put them on that way, and that way you would know they're all hanging the right direction. I don't know. This just, to me, seems... Just as easy. Okay, I'm gonna pull this down. All right, so let's see. Let's do another. Let's do another blue. So there's our pink, one, two, three, this fourth one's where we need to go. So one, two, three, right here. Do make sure your jump rings are closed up really good. That's pretty important, too, because you don't want them falling off on you. Okay, just flattening out my chain again. So here's my blue. Um, how about a green? So I'm on that link. I'm going to go one, two, three. So right here. One, two, three, right here. Okay. It's looking cute. It really is cute. All these little dangly shells. So I'm going to continue until I get down to the end hanging the rest of my charms. Okay, so I've got all of my charms on. I am just going to hook my lobster on one end. The end down here that doesn't have the length of chain hanging. Because that can be an extender. I'm just going to hook my lobster right here. And if you hung all your charms and made sure that your chain was correct when you bring this around and it's hanging on your leg... Um, all of these charms should hang in the right direction, and you can hook it on any of those little um, 
lengths that you want. So how cute is that? Just a little dangly um, anklet. So that is anklet number three. Now anklet number four, um, I may save that one for a minute. Let's do this one, anklet number five. Because um, that one is just using bead stringing wire again, and we just did that. So this is anklet number five, and I'm going to use some Coriana chain on this one. Um, because I want it to show, and I'm going to do a little bit of a floating thing, I think. So I've got two lobster, not lobster, I call these lobsters, and every one clamshells. One lobster, two crimp beads for the ends, and then I'm going to be using several crimp beads in the middle. So to do kind of a floating effect thing here with this. Um, and these don't have to be your good crimp beads, okay? Because all they're going to be doing is being a placeholder on the wire, you know, for your beads. They don't, they're not going to be holding anything together, nothing like that. Um, so just pull out your crappy crimp beads that you don't want to use on your projects that you worry they'll come apart on. <laughs> and we can use them on this because basically they're, like I said, just holding beads in place. They're not doing anything major. So what I wanted to do with this one is I had these abalone um, shell or cross links that I would like to use. So I'm going to be using just the top loop on these. And I'm, I don't know how many of them I'm going to use, maybe just a couple. But I'm just going to go ahead and take them off of the paper and off of each other because they are hooked together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off this bottom link because I'm not going to need it. So I'm just going to take my cutters and just trim it right off. And it comes off fairly easily. You could file that if you wanted to. I usually can just take my cutters and smooth it out and it's just fine. But if you wanted to file it, you're more than welcome to do that. So there's one cross. I don't know if I want to use more than one, probably will do maybe three. Three's a good number because I want to put some beads on here too. I have some abalone shell beads and I just was thought this would be really pretty with the silver. So let's take this one off and do the same thing. Trim our bottom loop off. You can kind of rock it back and forth with your cutters, too, if uh, if it's having trouble coming off. So, yeah, I think I'll try to do about three crosses on here. We'll see how it works with the beads, but... <laughs> Not doing well with the pliers today. <laughs> I don't think I'm using the right kinds. I need flat nose pliers, not bent nose and crimpers and all that. Don't do what I do. Okay, cutting this one off. All right, so there's our three crosses. Now I have these um, bigger abalone ovals and I have these little rectangles, which I know I want to use the rectangles. And then in with these abalone ovals, I don't know why, but I had some of these really pretty <laughs> um, hex cut beads. I, this is a mix somehow that I have put together. I don't know why I was doing that. But I may use some of these hex cut beads and some of the um, rectangles. I don't think I'm going to use the ovals because they're just kind of big. And I like to keep with the anklets, I like to keep things kind of small because you don't want it too heavy. Okay, so let's get some of these off. All right, so what I'm going to do, and I've got this measured out. Let me measure it. I've got this at about 11 inches, so I don't need that much, obviously, but um, I like to have a little extra just in case, you know, and just to make sure that I have enough to go around my ankle. All right, so um, first of all, I think I'll just go ahead and put the ending on. So to do that, you take your clamshell, put your Coriana chain right through it. And this Coriana chain is available on my website in several different colors. Put your crimp bead on. And then I'm just going to take my pliers and I'm going to, not at the very end, but right here, you know, with just a little bit sticking up of my wire, I'm going to crimp this down really tightly. Now, 
you pull your lobster or your clamshell up and just close it. If you want to put some glue in there, you can. Um, and then you'll know that it's very secure. It's not going to go anywhere. But I have not had trouble, so I'm just going to do it just like that. Okay? And now I'm going to start putting my beads on. So I want to put this one right at the beginning. So I'm just going to go straight on with that one. And then I'm going to do... Do I want to do a, I think I do. I think I'm going to do this one next, the rectangle, and then one more of these. And then I'm going to put a crimp bead on. These can be a little fiddly sometimes. Let him drop all the way down to where these beads are, and then I'm just going to crimp him down. And that's going to make a floating element. So see, it's not going anywhere. He's going to hold those beads right in place. That's all he needs to do. And then I'm going to take one of my crosses. Now, let me turn this this way. It's a little easier for me to work left to right for some reason. I'm going to hang the cross with a jump ring. And again, I'm using one of these oval jump rings because I feel like that they're pretty secure and a little more secure than just a regular jump ring. Okay, so we're going to close that right up. So there's our cross. Now the cross is just going to kind of float in between, and then I'm going to take another crimp bead, put it right on here, come all the way down, and I think I like about that much space between and crimp it down. And what that's going to do is that's going to give the cross, and when I get the next beads on there, it won't pass over that, but it's going to let it kind of float a little. So now I'm going to do my same pattern. I'm going to put this hex bead on. My little rectangle abalone shell bead. And my other hex bead. And now, if you can see, the cross will not come past there because the beads are blocking it. Okay, I'm going to do the next little crimp bead. Come down. I kind of just let gravity do the work here and crimp just right at the end of that. I don't want it to be too tight or stiff. And then I'm going to put my next cross. Now you just want to make sure that your crosses are hanging the same direction, <laughs> you know, so that the shell shows and not the back. I don't know, are these even double-sided? I don't think they are. No, they're not. So you got to be kind of careful of that. Then I'm going to take my next crimp bead, put it on. And I want to try to keep it about the same as the other one. I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm not going to measure, but that looks about right. Okay, you can measure, obviously, if you want to, but I think I can eyeball it. Do my next little bead component here. And if I end up needing to put more crosses on, than the three, I can. But I'm out of hex beads, so that is a problem. I did not anticipate running out of the hex beads like that. But let's go ahead and do this. Go ahead and crimp it down. Okay, just like this. I may have more of these in my stash. I'll have to go look. I didn't even realize they were in there at first, so I wasn't even going to use them, but then I saw them and was like, ooh, those are pretty. So I'll have to go. I made more there or something very similar that would probably work just fine, but hold on just a second. Let me get this cross on here. I think if I just had two more, it would be enough, but all I had in that little baggie but like I said I don't even know where that mix came from if I did it or if somebody else did it I hope I did it because 
I need the two more beads. So I'm going to throw one more crimp bead on here. And again, just eyeballing the length between the crosses. Okay, now let me see if I have any more of these hex beads. I'll be right back. Okay, so I do not have the exact same hex bead, but these are quite similar. <laughs> I can't hardly tell them apart, so I think they're going to work just fine, to be honest with you. And I'm going to use them. I think if anybody's looking at my ankle that closely, there's something weird going on anyway. So we're going to use these. They're very similar. They're actually the kind of the hex shape, but just a little bit more rounded than the others. But I don't think anybody's going to be able to tell, to be honest with you. We're going to put the next crimp bead on. Just like this. Crimp it down. Alright, it's looking pretty. I am going to do another cross. So same thing as before, just going to cut off the bottom. Make sure they're hanging correctly. They are. And I'm going to do one more um, sequence of the beads, and then I think that that will be plenty long enough. So let me get my next crimp bead on here. Did it go on? It did. <laughs> Couldn't see it there for a second. Okay. And then one more sequence of beads, and then I'm going to end it. So one, two, one more. And then I'm going to take my crimp bead, just like I did before, and my uh, clamshell. So I'm going to put my clamshell on first. Going to put my crimp bead on, let it drop down inside the clamshell, and just crimp it down. There we go. And I'm going to trim this Coriana chain, close up the clamshell. Now, I do need a ring for my lobster to clasp onto, and I didn't pull one out. So I'm just going to use one of the same ones, these decorative ones that I used in the other bracelet. This little guy, I think I am. If the clamshell will fit on it, it may not. It may be too thick to go through there. No, nope, it does. Okay, so I'm going to put that on one end. Close it up really good. I'm going to put my lobster on the other end. And here we have another little anklet with a floating design using Coriana chain. Come on up there, close up. So there it is. Super cute. And again, if it was too small, you could extend it with a couple of rings. But look how pretty that is. So let's get that out of the way. I think we're going to do this one last one. Now this one, we're going to use memory wire. Did you know you can use memory wire for an anklet? Like you can use it for a bracelet. Why couldn't you use it for an anklet, right? That's what we're going to do. So I've got some pretty little white cat's eye beads, six millimeter. 
and I have some rhinestone rondelles, and I've got these really pretty spacer beads that I got from Bargain Bead Box. They're just kind of like an AB coating. I just really like them. So, when I cut my memory wire for an anklet, I want to have quite a bit of overlap here. So, if you can see, this is regular bracelet memory wire. I have about, I'd say, two inches of overlap, okay? I'm going to take my round nose pliers, and I'm just going to roll this loop in. Close it completely up. So that none of your beads are going to fall off and then you can just bead this up however you want so i think i will do one of these uh, and i like when i'm doing memory wire bracelets i like them to be fairly simple patterns i don't know why so i'm going to do two cat's eye beads a rondelle two cat's eye beads I just wanted the rondelle in there for the sparkle. I think it's, so, yeah, that's really pretty. And then I'll do, do I want to use these spacers or not? I don't think so. I'm going to use the one on the end, and then I'm just going to, I'm just going to do a two cat eye bead rhinestone rondelle pattern here. We'll see how far we get with that. <laughs> I don't know how many rhinestone rondelles I have I have some more but we'll see how far we get with this and I'm just going to pretty much bead this all the way to the end until I just have room to make a loop um, so I just keep this up two cat's eye beads rhinestone rondelle yeah I like that I like the sparkle that that rondelle gives those cat's eye beads and then of course the cat's eye beads are beautiful on their own with the fiber optic look to them so I'm just going to continue to bead this one all the way down to the very end where all I have room enough to do is make a loop so do that and come on back okay so I'm back around and I've just got enough room for my loop so I'm going to put one of these on just because I put one on the other end to make it matching and then I'm just going to take my um, loop and roll it under make sure that it closes all the way so your beads don't slip off and there you have a perfect little anklet memory wire um, and I am going to model all of these for you guys here in just a minute <laughs> um, I'm going to have well I may have Chris video it. it's kind of hard to video on your foot but um, anyway here they all are we've got the memory wire one the one just strung on tiger tail, like normal. We have our stretch one. We have our floating bead one on Coriana chain. And we have our dangly one on our regular chain. So one, two, three, four, five ways to use uh, or to make anklets and I did have another one laid out here I was just going to make for myself and I, again I was just going to use the um, the regular tiger tail so we already saw how to do that one in this so in you know to keep the video from going extremely because it's already pretty long um, over I just didn't want to try to do another one but anyway guys thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed it if you like this content please give me a thumbs up and um, subscribe to my channel and um, I will link my website in the description box below this video where you can buy the Coriana chain, the clamshell connectors, um, and some really pretty beads and, you know, metals and all that kind of stuff. So check it out, and I will see you guys in the next video. Oh, hold on. I am going to model these. I'll be back. Okay, so here is the stretchy anklet with the little dangle. Okay, so there's that one. Here is the memory wire one. Go. And that's why you want to make your memory wire longer because it kind of needs to overlap. But there's that one. Then we have our crosses that are floating. Put these on. Actually, I probably need to add another ring to that one but to make it long enough. But that's what that one's going to look like hanging. Really cute. Okay. Then here is our just regular bead stringing wire one. 
And this one fits me pretty perfectly. Um, try not to get my whole foot in there. <laughs> it's already in there. <laughs> I don't want my foot in there. <laughs> it's impossible. <not> to... <laughs> oh, I can't get this one on. But anyway, this is what it would look like on its own. And then we have our dangly charm one. So where's the beginning of this one? Here we go. And this is the one with all the little seashells. So you wear it and it's going to look just, whoops, just like that. Okay. So those are our anklets, five different ways. And um, that's what they look like on. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.